I guess a procedural matter that you thought prevented the court from hearing the case? I just was saying I would like to make argument just before jumping into the evidence. Okay. So I'm not sure if uh, opposing counsel would like to go first as it's her motion. No, no, I, I guess I'm trying to understand what is the, is, is there a procedural issue that it's at issue or you're just saying? That no, no, I was just letting you know that I have argument as to as to why you shouldn't even review any of the evidence. And so it may not even take the 20 to 30 minutes that we had announced, depending on your decision on that. But it's it's part of my opening argument. Okay, okay. Then let's just go with openings and we'll go from there, okay? Yes. All right, thank you. You may proceed. Miss, um, Miss Yalton. Okay, thank you so much, Your Honor. Um, good afternoon. May it please the court. Um, for the record, this is Attorney Yarber appearing on behalf of um, Petitioner Mr. John Brown. We are here today for our motion for drug and alcohol testing, and we do have an outstanding motion for contempt. Um, for a brief back history of the case, Your Honor, this case has been ongoing for a while. Um, the parties have been married since 2009. The divorce was filed in November of 2019 and is pending the scheduling of a final hearing. Um, the parties have three minor children. <clears throat> the kids are aged 12, 10, and 8. Um, and the parties are currently operating under a temporary parenting plan ordered that um, the court put in place. So the case was scheduled for a final hearing for the week of March 13th. Um, the case didn't go forward due to petitioner's request to have an in-person hearing and the court not being able to accommodate the in-person hearing. <clears throat> and then the case was rescheduled to the week of April 11th through the 13th for a final hearing during that trial calendar and unfortunately wasn't able to move forward do, um, due to an emergency leave of absence. So um, we did- Emergency leave, leave of absence? There was an emergency leave of absence um, on the respondent's side okay. during that week. Um, so then we reached back out to the court after those dates passed to ask for another final hearing date, but we instead got put on the motions calendar. Um, so that is why we're here for the our outstanding motion for drug and alcohol testing and contempt. Um, but we did request that the respondent be ordered to submit herself to drug and alcohol testing because we believe it's in the best interest of the children for the court to have these assessments before making a final determination of um, custody and visitation at the final hearing, Your Honor. There is evidence and we have reason to believe that the opposing party may be using illegal drugs and there is a history of past um, use and exposing the children um, to drugs. We're certainly okay with the court implementing this order for drug and alcohol testing to go both ways. So both petitioner and respondent be required to submit themselves for drug and alcohol testing by the beginning of next week and provide the results um, in a no notice of filing to the court. Um, so we filed this motion to bring to rebring attention to the court for information that's already been presented but has never been addressed uh, specifically by the court. So in December of 2021, um, petitioner Mr. Brown's previous counsel filed into this case an expedited motion for an in-person emergency hearing for issues related, again, to this drug and alcohol usage around the children. So the allegations in that filed motion um, included um, children being exposed to marijuana pipes, blunts, joints in the respondent's car, um, petitioner being able to smell marijuana from outside of the respondent's car, the children having to ride in the car with the respondent while she smokes blunts um, and drives, and the respondent smoking weed around the minor children. All of this was filed with the court in an emergency motion in December of 2021. So these concerns were never addressed. Um, what happened is the court just implemented a temporary parenting plan, but there was never an implementation or order that either of the parties submit themselves for drug and alcohol testing. Um, so another example of how this has gone unaddressed. I'm um, sorry, I'm going to have to object just that's simply not true. The parties entered into a consent temporary agreement on all issues for that motion. So there was no need for a hearing. The parties agreed on the issues. Either way, Your Honor, there was still no drug and alcohol testing as a result of any order entered by the court. Um, also, there is an open TPO case. You're saying that you had a hearing on the request for drugs and alcohol that you all agreed not to do? 
Parties came, the parties have entered into three consent orders throughout this case. Sorry, Ms. Lutton, before you, um, since Ms. Yarbrough was talking, we're going to let her respond. My apologies. Obviously an opportunity to respond. What's your, your, your honor, I am not 100% sure. The reason being is because of course I was not counsel at that time, but that was filed and then an order was entered um, pertaining to a parenting plan, but the drug and alcohol allegations made in that filed order or that filed motion still were not addressed as far as if testing would ever happen or not. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna let you continue. Go ahead and then I'll let Ms. Lutton, you of course you can address that in your... Okay. I'm not, I'm not quite certain of essentially what you're saying, mm -hmm. but I do understand your position is that you were not the attorney of record at that time. Yes. Okay, so you can continue. Your Honor, okay, so there's also an open TPO case between the parties, which was filed in 2019. So the parties have an open TPO case also out of DeKalb County, um, and it, it's been sitting inactive since about November of 2020. So there's an order that the stays in DeKalb that hasn't been touched. Yes, Your Honor, and what? I have the case number for that. The case number is 19 po one one one. 77-10. Judge, if I may, it was granted against Mr. Brown and it's expired since. So, Your Honor, the TPO is actually not expired. Um, the last thing that was filed in the case, so it was filed in November of 2021, and it's, sorry, it was filed in November 23rd of 2020, and it's an order of clarification. So the um, Ms. Brown requested that the TPO remain active or become permanent. So then the court entered an order stating that the TPO will remain in effect until such time as there's a hearing on her motion for permanent order and the courts never scheduled a hearing. So there's still currently a stay away order, a temporary order in place between the parties because the courts never scheduled a hearing and that case was never closed out. That was the last thing that was filed. If you, if you have a temporary order, is it the temporary order will just expire just kind of by operation? I don't think it's permanent, was it? Well, Your Honor, the order of clarification says that it's going to remain open until there's a hearing. There's not a final disposition or anything filed into the case. But what I was getting at is that the judge ordered in that case, so it was Judge um, Ireland ordered that the party submit themselves monthly to drug and alcohol testing, and there's no compliance under that order either. Okay. All right, then. All right. You may continue. So, Your Honor, there's been a couple of times where this has been mentioned to the court, and there's still no drug and alcohol testing that has been done um, by the respondent or submitted. So that's under the current TPO and into this case. We do believe up under um, 1993 that um, history of drug use or substance abuse is something that the court needs to take into consideration before making a determination of what's in the best interest of the child and in helping to make a determination of that. We're simply asking that the court order that the respondent submit herself to drug and alcohol testing um, today or at any time, so by Monday, I believe is a good time, Your Honor, to submit herself for drug and alcohol testing and provide those results to the court before the court makes a determination of custody and visitation. Um, as far as the outstanding contempt, um, the contempt only stems from the communication provision um, of the temporary order that's in place. So the temporary order states that while the minor children are in the other party's care, they're supposed to be able to freely speak to the other parent. Um, so there have been times where the children have been in the care of mom and dad has not been able to get in contact with them um, the whole time that they were with mom. So we're just looking for a finding of contempt for the communication provision. Um, but our main thing, Your Honor, is going to be this motion for drug and alcohol testing. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, Ms. Luton, you, you may proceed. 
Judge, in terms of the temporary protective order that was just discussed, that was several years ago. My client got a temporary protective order granted against Mr. Brown due to his aggressive behavior towards my client. I believe there was some sort of language where if Mr. Brown wanted my client to submit to a drug test, he had to pay for it. If there are any issues regarding any of that not being done, the correct procedure would have been to file a contempt action within that TPO case. It was never done. Nobody has ever filed any contempt actions within that case. So I would say anything related to the TPO is completely unrelevant to today's issues. Let me stop you there. There is a motion for contempt in the case that still that appears to that's what I just um, reviewed that there is a motion for contempt that was actually placed in there, and it looks like it, it was in here. It was placed in here twice. I believe um, is that from him or from my client? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there was one. The first one there was a sorry. Um, the first one I see was uh, in January. Because um, I did at one point file a motion for contempt within the TPO matter, and the parties uh, reached a full agreement on those issues. Okay, so that one was, Mr. Brown filed one in January of 2020. January of 2020 looks like... Um, Three years ago? Because mm -hmm, it was January 2020. But I, I didn't see an order. It looks like there was the issue of no service um, for her. Like, that's yeah, what it, I, I haven't heard anything about that. And that was, again, Judge, that was three years ago. That's and, and so there was a request to file a point, serve as a process on that one. And he, um, in 2020, and the court denied it. And then um, a motion for contempt was in June of 2020, during the time where the motion the file was active because the that contempt motion when the the file was not the order was granted until September not September November of 2020 and this motion was filed in June of um of 2020 um a rule NISI was issued on it um and then there was a motion for the permanent protective order um, looks like that one was filed three days before the protect the, the motion would have ended. Um, all right, then this motion for order of clarification looks like that one. Let's see who filed that. Anne Marie Jordan. Looks like that was filed, and then he would there was some sort of service on it. I don't know if it went through. Let's see. Order of clarification looks like Judge McCash at extending the 12 months from November 2019 that got extended. Otherwise, continue to the court holds a hearing on the motion for the protective order in November of 2020. Um, and that was signed uh, the 23rd of 20, November 23rd of 2020. All right. So that's that at least that's the that's the history. You may continue. Right. Um, and I will say prior counsel and myself, um, you know, because there were several times where he did violate the temporary protective order and Prior counsel and myself worked together to put protective language into one of the consent temporary agreements within this case and not move forward with the uh, the TPO issues. So again, I am not aware of any sort of um, contempt issues regarding my client and drug testing that have been um, come forward for my client to have to appear on in the temporary protective order. Um, as far as this case is concerned, this case has been going on for approximately four years. The parties have attended several hearings. They've reached several consent temporary orders. They've attended mediation. They reached temporary agreements at mediation. They've entered into, like I said, three consent temporary orders. They agreed upon having a guardian ad litem in this case who has been involved in this case since December of 2021. During all of this time, never has husband insisted on moving forward with any sort of a hearing regarding my client's alleged drug or alcohol abuse. Rather, the parties have always reached agreements prior to having actually um, come forward with any temporary hearings. 
At this point, I think it has become very clear that Mr. Brown is continuing to create stall task tactics because he's not getting his way. It has become very evident that when he does not get his way, he gets incredibly upset and does things in order to prolong this litigation. For example, we got a guardian ad litem in this case um, who performed all of her necessary duties. My client provided all of her witnesses. He was told multiple, multiple, multiple times to provide all of his witnesses. Then she uh, created her first guardian ad litem report for my client to be recommended to have primary custody. And a final order or a final hearing was granted or provided to us for August 8th of two, 2022. After, the, after this case was then transferred back from the juvenile court <coughs> to the superior court because of the re recommendation having been given that my client have primary and the parties were giving a final hearing date. Then Mr. Brown came back and said, oh, you know what? I have witnesses that you need to actually speak to, including his girlfriend, which he could have given her prior to this report coming out. So because of that, then a motion for continuance was granted. The parties were taking off the final hearing calendar and we were taken back to the juvenile court and Maya all had to continue her investigation. She did that. She continued interviewing um, his necessary witnesses and then she came back with another guardian ad litem report. During those times, there were issues with uh, asking for temporary hearings where the parties would reach full consent agreements on those issues. So every single time there has been a, a temporary hearing scheduled in this case, the parties have reached a full settlement, a temporary settlement agreement on those issues, and the case did not need to meet, move forward with a hearing. Um, in December, on December 29th, 2022, the parties appeared in front of you for a hearing on a change of custody. Again, the parties into, entered into a third consent temporary order for my client to have primary custody and Mr. Brown to have every other weekend visitation with the minor children. We then got the second guardian ad litem report from Maya Aw for my client to have primary custody again, and we were given a final hearing date for March 13th, 2023. Then right before, six days before the March 13th final hearing date, Mr. Brown decided to hire his third attorney during this litigation, who then filed asking this court for a continuance and asked that the hearing be held in person simply as a stall tactic. Today's hearing doesn't need to be in person, but apparently the final hearing needed to be in person. That is only for purposes of stalling this case. Now, after four years of litigation, three consent temporary orders, two final hearing dates, two guardian ad litem reports, Mr. Brown is filing a motion for drug and alcohol testing based on evidence from four years ago. I have reviewed all of the evidence that they intend on putting into um, this hearing today. It is all from four years, three to four years ago, majority of it being when the parties were still married. I don't know how any of the evidence would be relevant today. Not to mention the guardian ad litem in her guardian ad litem report made note of the allegations on both sides of marijuana use and also made note that she found no reason to have either party move forward with drug testing. I would ask that so the court- Where is that? And you're saying the guardian ad litem, what did she file on that? In her recommendation, her report. Her report. Yes. Um, the report. When was her when 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 was her report filed? Yeah, I can tell you. One second, second guardian ad litem report. Um, I don't think it was filed in the case. It was just given to the court, and then it was distributed to the parties. Yeah, but normally, I if I if I got it, I would seal it. I would get it and seal it up. She gave it to us January 4th. I have it. Okay. Okay. All right. And what page are you on? Um, so let's see. It would be in both of, it would be under both her um, observations of my client and then separately her observation of Mr. Brown. She speaks about... It, I mean, you could probably go to my client. 
make that easier. Okay, hold on. Let me go and take a look at it. Oh yeah, I remember grading this report. Um, yes, because we had a we had a hearing um, based on one of the minor children having a seizure. Right, right, right. Yep, I remember reading this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, give me one quick second, okay, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I scan back to the report. I don't see there being a discussion of any issues with drugs um, in there, but you may continue. Yes, Judge, I would just ask that the court not consider any evidence submitted that is not at least from the past six months due to relevancy. These parties have entered into several temporary consent orders during this litigation and have attended several hearings with opportunity to address this exact issue and these evidence from three to four years ago, but they've chosen to reach agreements instead. Um, the evidence may be relevant for a final hearing, but it's not for a motion filed four years into the litigation when, again, these parties have entered into agreements based on the exact same evidence. Um, that, is, that is my argument for their motions on the drug and alcohol evaluation. In terms of the contempt motion, again, I believe that is a stall tactic. I'm not really sure what their, what their argument is or what they're upset about. The oldest child has a cell phone. And it appears the only evidence he provided is one, maybe two days where he was trying to text or call the child and maybe she didn't answer the phone. Um, I've never received any correspondence where um, opposing counsel has let me know that my client can't, can't get in touch with the minor child, nothing like that. So I, again, I, I don't even, I'm not really sure I understand the motion for contempt. My client um, has never made it where my, you know, the parties can't uh, communicate with their father. I will say Mr. John has though, in fact, confiscated the, the oldest child's cell phone on several occasions and refused to give the cell phone back to my client, even though it's her property. That has been issues within this case that the guardian ad litem has had to deal with. But again, I've let her deal with those rather than filing a contempt action. Um, so again, I'm not sure what we need to address on that, but it, it's it's unsubstantiated. There's no evidence that my client doesn't allow him to speak to the children when they're in her care. And again, I think it's just another stall tactic. So let me go back. Um, I, I definitely understand Mrs. Um, Luton's position on the drug issue because for the case to be so old, um, that that does that is kind of alarming. Why are we dealing with it now? Looks like there was a motion filed. So my question is, are we talking about something that was just observed? Um, or are we talking about something that, as Ms. Luton's position was, that he occurred, that she, that he saw occurring several years ago? What are we, what are we talking about since there? Your Honor, there has been a recent occurrence um, within the last month that Mr. Brown has concerns about that makes him believe that the things that were occurring um, three or four years ago are still ongoing. Um, of course, he wouldn't have these type of evidence that they would have when they were first breaking up, um, but he still has evidence that alludes to um, her continuing to participate in the use of illegal stuff. So here's what I'm going to do. No, I'm going to let you call your client. I want to hear what the current information is that he has because we've already, you got a guardian at Lightham who's done a full report in the case. She never mentions in her report that he even brings up drugs to her. To me, that's a red flag because when you have a guardian at litem who's supposed to be able to take into consideration your interview to make sure the children are well cared for, and the biggest issue to you, like the main thing to you that forms the whole concept of your case, you don't mention to your guardian at litem, that's a red flag, okay? Because there's nowhere in the report where she says that's mentioned to her because that's, that's why she's there. And you go through a whole report and months and no one mentions the very reason that you have concerns about the health and well-being of your child, that's a red flag to the court. The second thing is, is that if the issue was brought up and on other hearings, there was a consent motion that was handled or a consent order that was resolved. And then again, it's not mentioned again. And now we're here three years later 
on an issue that appears to have been something that was seen three years ago, that's another red flag. Um, so those are things that concern me. So we're going to limit this, Ms. Yarber. I need you to get to the point and let me know what it is and why we, how three years of stuff got missed. That is the basis of the request. Um, and then there's an emergency basis that appeared that it came across as I think. Yeah, emer no, that's emergency leave. I'm sorry, I was looking at emergency leave apps. Thought it was emergency motion. I was looking at that. No, that's emergency medical leave. I apologize. So <clears throat> let me hear from let me hear from your client on that, but I want you to go directly to that to that issue. Okay. Give yes, me your honor. <clears throat> one, one quick second. <clears throat> Mr. Brown, raise your right hand. The asylum is where I affirm that when you're about to give to the court is the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God, unmute yourself. Yes. All right, Ms. Yarbrough. Mr. Brown, can you state your full name for the record? John Dwayne Brown. Okay. And just so we can jump right into it per the court's instructions, um, what recent concerns do you have about the opposing party? Um, maybe using drugs, illegal substances? Um, most recently, our daughter Madeline left her book bag in mom's car. And when mom had delivered the book bag to me, it completely reeked of marijuana. This isn't the last month. I could take out pages. The, the book bag smelled like marijuana. It was obvious mom tried to hide it because she sprayed her perfume on it. Objection, um, I, Your Honor. Speculation. The same. Has anything else occurred that has a raised red flags to you um, pertaining to her the opposing party maybe using drugs? The most concerning thing is that Gaia has taken our four-year-old daughter McKenna to an ecstasy drug deal. Objection, Your Honor. He is trying to bring up issues that are not recent. Again, four years ago. He made this and argument. I filed a contempt motion. I filed two contempt Brown. motions Sorry, for drug Mr. testing. Mr. Brown, what yeah. you're testifying about now, did it occur within the last few months? Yes. My child's book bag smelled like marijuana when it came home from mom's house. Okay. You, okay. Is, is there anything else that occurred during the time frame? She also takes the kids to clean uh, clients' houses who are known drug dealers and cocaine users. Again, objection, speculation. I, I don't know how he would have any understanding of my, my client's clients whose houses she cleans. We frequent the same establishments and people tell me that that guy's a cocaine user. And Okay, objection, says, hearsay. It's not hearsay. She, Cynthia knows my kids. She knows my kids by name. Wow. It, she, it, she's not here. Hearsay. Um, there's an objection. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, I've been trying to get Ms. Brown to drug test since the TPO order. I volunteered to drug test myself in March of this year. And I find it interesting that I've drug tested four times since the TPO order. And Guy has had contempt and refuses to drug test. I don't see why she wants to avoid drug testing so much. If she's not worried about it, then why wouldn't she just drug test? You say she refuses to drug test. There is an order asking her to drug test? Yes, ma'am. A condition of uh, court order 19 PO 11177-10, which does have an order of clarification hereby extending the order until a final hearing, which hasn't happened. Thereby, that order is currently active, and there is a condition for monthly drug testing by both parties. Uh, Ms. Lutton mistakenly told you that the drug test was not paid for, but that is just another lie or maybe uh, oversight on their end. I actually have records where I've sent Ms. Brown the receipt for a paid drug order, drug test order, waiting for her. And she claims and will tell everyone that she hasn't received it, didn't know about it, but she has indeed received that. For, where are you looking for the drug testing so I can look where you're looking? Your, um, Your Honor, if I could, I will, I will have to object on all of this. None of this is in this case. He is referring to a temporary protective order from about three, four years ago that he claims my client is in violation of, which he should have moved forward with a contempt action within that case for. He didn't. 
We're here on the divorce matter. It's not relevant. That's if true. You look at, if question. you do look at the I'm contempt. So, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm not doing yes, it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I yes, ma when I when I start talking, everybody else stops talking. Okay. Yes, so I can be heard and get what I need to make a decision. Miss Luck, you are correct. That matter would need to be filed in the proper case file. I understand that. However, my question still is, where are you looking at in this file? I believe it's on page five of seven, but I haven't read that order. I just have a a pretty good memory. Um, I can pull it up in about one minute. Yaron, I could point you in the direction of it. Okay, where is it? Um, it's in the filed final order. The top of the page says consent, family violence, 12 month protective order. And on the last page is written in um, by the judge and it's number 27. And it says it is further ordered and then it goes into the drug testing. Number 27 on what now? On the last page. What this, page? Is, this is pertaining to the TPO is what he's referring to. What date are you looking at? The date is it's filing of this document. November 20th, 2019. November Okay. All right, you may continue. Your Honor, I don't believe that there's anything further as far as uh, my client's testimony of recent findings besides the incidents that he mentioned. Okay. So let me ask you a question, Mr. Brown. You remember that you had a guardian at Lydum in this case who completed a report and submitted it to the court. Um, I think I released that to you, so I'm assuming I released it to your attorney. You may have had an opportunity to review it as well at this juncture, right? Yes. Tell me why during that whole time frame that you had the guardian ad litem, um, your issues of well-being and safety did not bring up those matters to the guardian. I actually did bring up those matters. Um, I have quite a bit of uh, concrete evidence of Ms. Brown um, using drugs, uh, admitting to- Listen, 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 listen. I, I submitted the evidence to the Guardian and I can tell you the date. Um, I no, can't tell you- No, tell me the date. I'm asking you, um, first, my first question is, did you mention it? And your response to me is, yes, you did. Right? Yes, ma'am, I did. All right. And your position is, is that you dismissed the, the issues with to, uh, related to drugs to her, but they did not make it to the report. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, you, you, then you were going on to say that you have proof that you submitted them. What do you have as proof? So I shared her the evidence via um, Google Drive, because that's where the evidence was stored. And on um april of 2022 it was sent to maya awe and her paralegal marissa denson um all the evidence of gaia's drug use um, with the kids and with other minors i'm sorry what what date was that on april 2022 And I told the Guardian about all this evidence in a phone call interview in February of 2022. It was about a two and a half hour long call. And it appears to me that all my concerns on the call regarding drug use did not make it into her report. Okay. So you had a phone call with her in what month was that? February. February of 2022? I believe it was 
Yes. Yeah. Because I don't, I think she was ordered as part of the results from the uh, December 2021 emergency hearing. And so I don't think she was really placed on our case till a few weeks after, you know, the order came out a few days after that. And then um, she was selected. And, you know, so I didn't have my first interview with her until February of 2022, which was about two months after the emergency hearing. So while you were married, these things were not at issue. It only came an issue regarding marijuana after you filed for divorce. Am I correct? No, they were an issue during the marriage. And my issue was I wanted accountability from Gaia to, to change. And um, my evidence regarding the drug use also shows she says things like, you can just have the kids. And because um, she does know what Action, she's doing. That's not true. I haven't seen any evidence where she stated that. So, I can, so I let can me ask you. you, in your petition, you, you didn't mention drug use in the petition. Why not? Petition for divorce? Yes. Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, I was not happy with that lawyer. And so I, I, I suppose it was an oversight due to poor counsel. Um, but I obviously was concerned about drug use because I asked for the drug testing portion in the TPO and I did drug test per the court's order. You know, I have been complying with the TPO drug testing order and I filed contempt twice. I mean, it is a concern. If you look at the history, I'm very concerned. Um, you, you, at this juncture, you have five years of drug testing? No, I only did it for three months for the TPO and then COVID happened. So you would be just as much in contempt as she would be. Well, I have a current drug test right now, so. It, it wouldn't matter. You would still be in contempt because you didn't do it every year, every month. I'm not just as in contempt. I guess I tested four out of 12 months and she tested zero out of 12 months. And if, if you look at the contempt motion, may, if I, may I add a comment, Your Honor? Uh-huh. Um, when you were looking at the history for 19 PO 11177 10, there's actually two motions for contempt. Um, the first one was dismissed because service wasn't proper. And the second, and I believe that was in January of uh, 2020. And then in February of 2020, I submitted a second contempt motion for the same issue for Miss Brown failing the drug test. This time I did have proper service. And if you look, I believe the judge was uh, Sabrina Scott. If you look at the bottom. I'm sorry, of the, I believe the judge was Sabrina Scott on the motion for contempt. On the second one, it should be a February filing, I believe. The hearing may have been March, the beginning of March. I don't exactly remember the dates, but it was the second time I filed contempt. And if you look at what the judge Sabrina wrote at the bottom, in her own words, it says something to the matter of Guy Brown appears. Oh, to be I'm sorry, I'm going to have to object to best evidence. If he's referring to some sort of an order that was put into the TPO, I would like to see it. I don't want him paraphrasing what he believes the judge stated. Right. I, I'm trying to. Order. I have a copy of it if you'd like me to but, provide. Again, it. I hate to be repetitive. This is, uh, again, relevance. This is not the divorce action. He's referring to something <laughs> he filed three years ago in a temporary protective order. Yes. That was three years ago, and we're in the divorce action. It's not relevant. Well, drug testing is. It's in the T. Miss Brown still <laughs> won't drug test. Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown. Yes, ma'am. All right, focus. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm a little confused, so let me just make sure I understand this. The motion for to extend the 12 months TPO that was filed by Miss Brown is that right, Miss Luton? Yes, that is correct, Judge. 
So her position was she wanted the most, the order to be extended for her protection. Is that right? Correct. I believe that would have been, I don't, I believe that would have been for, I was representing her, but yes, I believe that is true. Okay. Uh-huh. I see. <clears throat> and because it looks like there were these permanent order uh, hearings could not be held, her position was let's keep it open so that the court could hear them so that that TPO would not lapse. All right, I see now. So I was going back and forth. I was trying to figure out who extended it. So it was extended by Ms. Brown. Correct. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we finished the, the, the guardian ad litem report. So this, what's, what's, the, what's the hold up on the case? He hired his third attorney six days before we had our final hearing and she requested a continuance. Your Honor, I did not request a continuance. I requested that the hearing take place in person due to the amount of witnesses that were coming and the amount of evidence that needed to be presented to the court. I did not know that the courthouse was shut down due to some sort of flooding, in which case you all postponed it. Then it was postponed again because of opposing counsel's emergency leave. And we actually, Your Honor, did not request this hearing. So there's a correspondence between myself, the court, and opposing counsel where we requested a final hearing after the lapse of time in which opposing counsel's medical leave was done. And oh, the oh. So the the, put this down for a motions hearing. We didn't even request this hearing. But who filed the, why would you, so what were you were, were trying to do? Just file a motion and I was going to. Your Honor, we were trying to file our motions to make sure we had everything in place to be heard at the final hearing. Like our motion for contempt um, of the communication provision could have been heard um, on a final basis. And as far as drug and alcohol testing, we just wanted to make sure that was presented again to the court since we are still requesting for there to be some testing in the case as it has never happened. Okay, I, I, I don't know about that, Ms. Yarbrough. I think if you file a motion, your motions will enter, will affect the ability for it to be considered on a final because they're outstanding matters. So when you file a motion on a case that is ready for final, that says to me, Your Honor, there are things outstanding in this case, which means that it pulls it off of that, potentially could pull it off of that final track because you got motions and I want to have those resolved before I put you on a final. Now, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I look at the motion and go, I don't really care. It's going on this final calendar. I'll handle both of those motions during that final calendar. And then, but sometimes, the fact that you have motions that are outstanding, those matters are going to be resolved before we put you back on that final calendar. So I'm not sure exactly where the confusion came in, but it would it would it suggests to me that you are trying to say something was still outstanding. But I agree with Ms. Luton. Uh, I know she she um, has made her objections um, well known, and they have been accepted by the court. I'm going to deny your motions um, for drug and alcohol testing. Um, your motion for um, contempt, will I will fold that into the final. Um, we already have a guardian ad litem. Those issues, uh, if they were presented to the guardian ad litem, did not um, put the guardian ad litem on notice to do more than what she's already done to protect the well-being of the children. And so those are matters you can bring up during your trial. So to the extent that your position is, is that the, that Miss Brown uses drugs or alcohol, then you need to have your evidence ready, but um, I'm not going to proceed in that manner. Now, the other issue dealing with the failure to drug test, yes, you could probably bring up the failure to drug test in your 19 CV case. It does appear that that is open. 
Um, I, I don't know to what extent legally that is open um, because I don't know the timing of a lot of things in that case dealing with the COVID stuff. So I really don't know to the extent, but if I were to read it for what it is, it would say it's open um, and that those matters are gonna be ha handled together. I would suggest that the issue of the permanent TPO be a part of the final hearing in this case, to the extent that it is open and it'd be kind of merged and then the court would determine whether or not to, to grant a permanent TPO in the final divorce case. So it just kind of makes sense that they go hand in hand and then we'll kind of deal with that. To the extent Mr. Um, Mr. Brown's position is that there's a violation of the TPO because um, there was no drug testing done. Um, I, 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 I don't prevent anyone from doing whatever they think is necessary to preserve whatever rights they think they have and also to preserve their case. So I'm not going to tell you to file or not to file anything. Neither am I generally going to pre pre prejudge it. But I would say that if you have a case that is five years old for which you're supposed to do monthly testing and you have four months and someone else has zero months, I don't think you're making much of a case. Um, because you didn't you didn't drug test every month to the extent you're going to say shame on this other person and or at the third time you took your monthly test and that person wasn't taking theirs then you needed to file your motion for contempt and you can't wait five years to, to, to bring four years to bring it up later I mean it doesn't look right to wait four years to file a motion for contempt on something that occurred four years ago you would have filed that contempt at the time where it was happening because otherwise the concept of latches occurs. Latches occurs when you, you wait on something for so long until it almost becomes moot or laughable. For example, this happens from time to time. If someone, if I were to say to you, you know, you're supposed to, well, it, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> the point is, is that at some point, if you're going to ask for a contempt, you need to act it on it like it was contemptuous to you. And you don't wait four years to do that. Um, because if you do, it looks like something's not right or that you're making up stuff, not that it's made up, but that you're bringing up things to long to, to make the case longer than what it needs to be. You're at a final. You're only a few weeks from a final, which means you've been through discovery. You've had your, your guardian at litem. You've done all the things you needed to do to be ready. To the extent that drugs are going to impact your case that much, you would have evidence of it and you can present it at trial. So I'm not preventing you from bringing up drugs at trial. Um, I'm just preventing the court from making it mandatory in this particular case because it's something that we should have dealt with before a week before the trial, you know, but uh, before weeks before the trial is supposed to be set. Okay, so that's what the court is going to do. Um, Miss um, Marshall, when was this case or last set for a final? What was that date again? Uh, one moment, Your Honor. Let me bring it up. Okay. <clears throat> Your Honor, it, it was uh, April 11th. It was on that that uh, final trial calendar, April, April 11th through April 13th. Mm -hmm. And when outside of that, uh, outside of these issues, I just went over and told you how I was going to handle them. Oh, wait a minute. Motion has a motion for discovery. You have a discovery issue here. Are y'all handling this outstanding ocean motion for Income, has that been resolved? Your Honor, to my understanding, it has been. I believe that's opposing counsel's motion to compel. Ms. Luton, tell me about that. Is that resolved? Um, Judge, so it is their argument that he just simply doesn't have a job. They have no evidence to provide. So I don't know how we could really move forward with an argument on that. I'm just going to present that he's intentionally unemployed and there's no reason why he can't be working. Okay. All right, then. So that is issue is resolved. Um, 
<clears throat> and uh, we'll put this one on a trial calendar. Um, we have um, a trial calendar coming up in a couple of weeks as well. No, actually, no, I think that's next week. Never mind. So, Ms. Marshall and I will take a look at it. We'll get it back on the next domestic calendar, probably within 30 days. Okay, thank you, Judge. All right, any other issues that are outstanding? Your Honor, can I make a comment? Uh, sure, Mr. Briefly, Brown. about your latches explanation? If, I, you, if you need to, but I don't think it's going to make well, a there was an emergency hearing that I filed in December 2021, and I uh, tried to bring these issues to the court. And at that time, the and, and the court didn't hear it. The, the parties reached an agreement. Are, the court said that they were not here to see evidence on Miss Brown's drug use. And at this time, it was recent. It was relevant. We also presented evidence of her being suicidal in front of the kids, and the court denied us hearing that evidence at the time which court none talking? of that is true the parties and there's a court <laughs> the parties on. entered into a consent temporary agreement and then the ca the hearing was taken off the couch sorry Michael. all you have to do is just object that's it okay mr brown did it yes ma'am you said the court are you talking about me did someone else sit in for me someone sat in for you i believe there was a substitute judge but it was on this case the 19 fm 11 280 and on that case, the court did an order wherein those issues were rejected. It's they said that um, they wanted to ensure that I had 50 50 custody. They said it's obvious I'm a good dad. So they instated 50 50 custody and said that they were going to hear the drug and mom being suicidal issues at the hearing, the final hearing. OK, and you're going to get that. Well, are you going to tell me that the evidence is too old? Because I, I have the same evidence from 2021. You can present whatever evidence you need to present. Because it's the same yeah. evidence from that time two years ago. That I tried to present it. We did try. You can continue to present it. The issue okay. only is, is that you're you're you asked a court to to make her drug test. And what I'm saying to you is that there is no evidence that I have right now that's so pressing for me to four years later bring up a drug test to make a mandatory for her to test. It doesn't mean that you can't bring it up. If you want to bring it up, that's fine. If you have evidence that she's using or whatever, you have testimony or whatever, you can bring those things up. I'm just not going to, on the eve of a trial time frame, bring up a, a matter that was known four years ago. Are court, are court orders considered uh, evidence or records? You can talk with Ms. Yarber about that, and she'll okay. be over, um, you know, of course, if the evidence is admissible, then it's admissible. Um, yes. But we're just not going to slow the case down for drug testing at this point, because from the court's perspective, I just don't see how over three years, all the matters that you brought up regarding drug testing was somehow ignored by your counsel, ignored by the court, or ignored by your counsel, would have been ignored by the other judge who sat in place of me would, would have been ignored by me, would have been ignored by um, your other counsel, and then would have been ignored by the judges who did the TPO. It just It's just too much. That means that these matters were not pressed like they should have, and consequently, I'm just not going to stop as a result of that. That's all I'm saying. We're going to have a hearing and you can bring those matters up. I'm just not going to grant your drug testing. Okay, there's a difference. And and from your understanding of the reading of the order of clarification, the TPO conditions are still active. So there is an order under your court for her to drug test, but it's under a different case file. Well, actually, it's I did not sign the order, but I would accept it. Um, accept that order. Well, what I'm saying to you though is is that if she's in contempt, so are you. Well, I've drug tested recently, and I will go drug test today. Yeah, but that's not the issue, though, Mr. Mr. Brown. Your position is that she's in contempt, but you're in contempt as well. So you do whatever you think is necessary. I'm not going to prevent you from doing whatever you think is necessary. If you think it's, it's, it's really important for you to be in contempt so that she'll be in contempt, then you do whatever you think you need to do. Um, I'm just saying that 
you, you've heard what I'm saying. I understand. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'll see you all back here um, in the month or so. You all take care. Uh, you. Your Honor. Your Honor. Oh, leader. I apologize, Mr. Love. Go ahead. Oh, Your Honor, I just want to check. Did you want a proposed order from counsel? Yeah. So just um, on, on the order, Ms. Luton, if you just prepare an order indicating that those matters were denied. <clears throat> I'll do that. And yeah. I'm sorry, Your Honor, if I may, can we get updated time announcements for trial, please? Do you have an updated time announcement right now? If not, you can send that to Ms. Marshall via email. Your Honor, I'd like to send it via email. That's fine. All right, just send it in the next few days so that we can properly schedule it on the next calendar. Thank you. All right, thank you. Y'all take care. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Ms. 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 Uh,